I ran out of the house and into the streets. All the while, the thought was frantically running through my head. I had to get out. I had to get away from the cemented town. Good morning, this is Calamity Calling, and today I'm playing Michael Heza. And it's a game that kind of has a relation to the one I played last week. So uh, Next Door, which was based on a, a book, a manga, sorry, by Junji Hito. And this one describes itself as a love story to horror manga and I thought that sounded so cool and I'm still reading through pig pens so I thought you know I'm, I'm in that kind of mindset that I'm really appreciating some beautiful horror graphics. In this one we can only go through the first door for now because it's still in the demo phase but as they develop more it's gonna get to go through the other ones but let's jump in because I'm excited to play the oh okay we're starting strong Oh, and it's a visual novel as well, which I'm really intrigued to see how they play this one. Act one, pets. That cat looks like it has the spirit of someone I owe money on the inside. My eyes were burning. It felt like hot coals were lying on my eyelids. I slowly opened them and attempted to heave myself up from the cold asphalt, but I failed. My whole body was heavy and my head felt like it was being squashed by a hydraulic press. After a few attempts, I finally succeeded and tried to make it out where I was. The fog in my mind lifted slowly and I realised that I was in a dark alleyway. My vision was still blurry and I had trouble keeping my eyes open, but I could tell that I had never seen this place before. Slowly, my heart began to race. Was I abducted? Mugged? What had happened to me? I hastily checked my body, fortunately finding no wounds. Why was I feeling this weak then? Maybe I was drugged? The music. As I tried to recall what might have happened to me, my eyes finally focused and I could see the house in front of me. In fact, it was the only house on the street with its lights on. The dirty yellow glow shone through every single visible window. I felt some relief knowing that the tenants were awake. Perhaps they could tell me where I was. I wouldn't mind some warmth either. I approached the front door. It took me some searching to find the doorbell through the overgrown ivy. A deep gong rang out from within the house when I pressed it. The sound, amplified by the cold wind cutting through my shirt, made me tense up. What an odd choice for a doorbell sound, I thought while rubbing my upper arms to warm myself. I waited. No one answered. My mind twisted in confusion. Why was no one coming? I rang the doorbell again. Then I tried knocking. No response. No one was coming. I didn't understand. Did they forget to turn off the lights and go on vacation or something? As a last resort, I tried turning the doorknob and it actually opened? This worried me. Did something happen to the family living here? Perhaps I could find a phone and call the police. Suddenly, a loud crash echoed through the street. My heart started to pound as my body tensed up. I wanted to dash into the house, but my feet refused to move. What was that sound? Was someone out there? Pictures of otherworldly monsters armed kidnappers popped into my mind as my eyes scanned the darkness. The world was silent once more. I was still on edge, but my body slowly started to relax as I regained my composure. I decided I didn't want to find out what that was. Cautiously, I stepped through the threshold and firmly closed the door behind me. I felt an immediate lurch of guilt since I was trespassing into a stranger's home. 
but I'd rather face police questioning than wander around a strange neighbourhood in the middle of the night. Hello? Is anyone there? No answer. The house was eerily quiet. I cautiously, cautiously ventured further down the front hall. Perhaps I could find a telephone. I stopped in front of one of the doors. A dim yellow light seeped silently through the bottom crack. I turned the knob. Locked. Then the next one. Also locked. They all seemed to be. I frowned. Why were the lights behind these locked doors lit? It gave me an uneasy feeling. The door at the very end of the hall was the only one that I hadn't tried yet. I grasped its handle and turned it slowly. It swung open to complete darkness. Once again my body tensed up while my mind started to conjure horrific images. A beast with dislocated limbs and crooked teeth creeping towards me from the darkness. A floor littered with corpses and walls stained with blood. A giant spider sitting in a corner waiting for its chance to strike. My hands shook as I reached to flick the light. It was an utterly ordinary bedroom. My heartbeat slowly calmed down as I realised that I seemed to be safe. I felt almost silly getting scared of nothing. A quick search yielded nothing but barren, dusty shelves. The bed was the only meaningful object present. Slowly but surely, a wave of fatigue washed over me. The more I looked at the bed, the more tempting it became. With my adrenaline rush fading away, I found that I was more exhausted than I'd realised. Like a worm worming its way into an apple, a single thought slowly appeared in my mind. I had to sleep. That was the only thing I could think of as my consciousness faded. I had to sleep. The world turned dark as the soft covers of the bed pulled me deeper and deeper into the black abyss. Some people have gotten as little as a couple of hours of sleep the last couple of nights. Let's hope that this will all be over soon. I shot awake. It was as if no time had passed. I hardly remembered falling asleep. Feeling a bit better, I decided to take another look around the house. The fact that no one was here, even though the lights were on, was still nagging at the back of my mind, but I was more confident that I'd be able to find help now that it was daytime. I left the bedroom to retry the doors, just in case. They were still locked. I would have at least liked to take a shower. I smelled my clothes, and they had indeed started to smell slightly sour. It would have been nice to access the kitchen as well, although it was doubtful there was much food here given the house's empty state. The place seemed to have nothing left to offer. I'd be better out on the streets now that it was day, even if I was still missing my wallet. I left the house for the bright sunlight. The back street didn't seem so bad anymore. I found it to be rather cosy and quaint. I made my way down the path until I heard the faint sound of conversation in the distance. A weight lifted from my heart when I first glimpsed people walking around a pedestrian area. There weren't too many of them though, as I looked around I got the feeling it was a rather small town. Trees and flowers were planted at regular intervals which gave it more of a rural atmosphere. It didn't matter, I could finally ask for help. Uh, excuse me, could you tell me where I am? The woman blinked at my approach. She frowned and scowled in my general direction. This is Kedja... Kedja... Hang on. Kedjam Heath. 
This is Ketchum Heath. She looked uncomfortable talking to me, so I thanked her and let her be. Ketchum Heath? I've never heard- I had never heard of a town like that before. Where? How did I end up here? The thought of being somewhere I didn't recognise scared me. How was I supposed to get back home if I didn't have the slightest idea where to go? I took a deep breath to calm myself down. My next best bet would be asking someone to allow me to make a call from their mobile phone. I approached an older man in a business suit. Excuse me, may I use your phone? I'm a bit lost and would like to call a friend of mine so he can pick me up. His lips curled into a grimacing frown. Um, sorry, I'm in a bit of a hurry. I approached person after person, but even after what felt like several hours, I had no luck. No one wanted to lend an unkempt, half-dressed stranger their phone. As I made my way through a side street, I heard two elderly women whispering to each other. I heard of some violent incidents recently. Most got away with just a flesh wound, saying that they were attacked by something or someone. Yeah, I heard that too. I wonder if it has anything to do with the pet disappearances. I heard of another cat that hadn't come back in several days. I was so focused on the conversation that I almost ran into a girl. I mumbled an apology until I realised she had approached me on purpose. Hi. Hi. You need to call someone, right? She extended her hand and offered me her phone. How did you know? People have been talking about you. We've had some violent crimes here recently. Everyone is a little on edge. Many pets have been getting sick. Some say someone has been poisoning them. She nervously shuffled her feet and glanced away. Thank you, I won't take long. I took the phone and dialed a friend's number, but the call didn't go through. I tried it again, but the result was the same. Maybe his phone was turned off? I tried my parents' house phone, then my job's front desk, then my boss's personal cell. Each time the call failed. I was sure I had the right numbers. Maybe the phone had a bad connection? It seems like the calls won't connect for some reason. Hmm, maybe you'll have more luck trying a landline. My phone does act up sometimes. You might be right. Still, thank you a lot. I didn't want to hold her up any longer, so I gave her a phone back and wandered off with a rushed farewell. Leaving that way may have been a bit rude, but I was too frustrated to care. I just wanted to look for another way to get in contact with someone I knew. It occurred to me that I should have asked her for directions to the police station. I turned to look for her, but she'd already vanished. As I made my way through the town, I could now definitely feel the tension in the air. The girl was right. Everyone was on edge. While I was passing by an alleyway, something caught my eye. They were too big to be rats. I couldn't really make out anything other than their eerie, glowing eyes. Maybe it, it was a cat gang searching for tr the trash for food? Apropos food. I was starving. But I couldn't possibly just ask random people to feed me and, and since my wallet was missing I didn't have any money on me to buy something. Though, there were oddly tempting looking plants growing nearby. As I stared at them, I felt a pull. Their strange appearance hypnotised me. And without me noticing, my feet inched closer. And closer. And closer. Mm-mm, not doing it. Don't eat strange things. I broke away from the hypnotic pull of the plants. What was I thinking? It didn't matter how hungry I was, they could be poisonous. But my hunger was beginning to gnaw at my insides. My vision grew, grew, grew blurry. Who, know, who, who knew how long it had been since I'd eaten? Suddenly, I collapsed and the world around me vanished. I heard that another team had some problems with a scientist of theirs who ended up being banned from their research center. She apparently performed experiments on humans who were... I can almost sympathise with the... Oh. It was dark when I awoke. It seemed like no one had bothered to help me. I tried to get up, but I couldn't. My whole body was paralysed from hunger. Something was shuffling by my ear. Oh, 
I felt the snipping of an animal. Perhaps one of those cats I saw earlier. I couldn't bring myself to look. It lost interest and walked past me towards the plants. I heard more follow. As they padded into view, I noticed that something was off about them. It must have been my mind playing tricks on me. My hunger was overwhelming. Something about their bodies was wrong. They started to eat the plants. They were smacking rather loudly and made unnatural, fleshy sounds. Every now and then, one would pause and give off a low growl that didn't sound like a cat. More slightly higher pitched bear growl. After a while, the sounds diminished and I felt their presence vanish. I gathered my strength and forced myself to my feet. What had just happened? What were those creatures? The violent crimes that I heard about earlier popped into my mind. My hands began to shake slightly. What would have happened if I hadn't been paralysed and if they'd noticed I was still alive? Most house lights were still lit. I mustn't have been out for long. Once again my body gave off a deep growl. It was as if my stomach was eating itself. I had to get some food or else I was in danger of collapsing again. Being as desperate as I was, I approached the next best house and knocked. I was surprised when the door actually opened. Hi there, come on in. How nice of you to visit. Uh, do, do we know each other? Before me stood a fashionably dressed woman with a big smile on her face. At first glance she seemed welcoming, but her movements were rather stiff and almost mechanical, as if they'd been practiced over and over again. She took another, more thorough look at me and seemed to realise that we did, in fact, not know each other. Ah, you must be a new neighbour then. Please come in. She disappeared before I could correct her. I hesitantly followed her inside. On my way in, I saw a food bowl near the entrance with some of the strange looking plants I had seen earlier in it. Ah, she'd been feeding those to her pet. I peeked after the woman into the living room. A man leapt to his feet as he saw me and stretched his big hand out to me. The other arm hung down limply. Apparently he wasn't able to move it. Hi there, it's nice to meet you. How are you doing? I reciprocated his firm handshake and he clearly gestured to me, cheerfully gestured for me to take a seat beside him. To my surprise, the girl who had helped me earlier was here as well. She gave me a small wave starting to feel like a festivity. We should have neighbourhood get-togethers like this more often. All oh, right, this is... She turned and frowned in my direction whilst trying to remember a name she hadn't asked me for. Scott. I'm Scott. Right, Scott. He moved in nearby recently, I think. So we should invite him in as well. Certainly. It's nice to meet you. Uh, no, I'm not really... Oh, right, food. Give me a second. The woman rushed into the kitchen and came out with steaming dishes of food. I could make out different kinds of meat, baked potatoes and more. My stomach gave off a deep growl and my mouth began to water. Any thought of honesty about my origin was gone. The other visitors started piling food onto their plates and I followed suit. As I devoured it and life came back to my body, I let my eyes wander over the others. Everyone seemed to be rather tense, especially the woman and the man. Their movements were rather stiff. Every now and then, they threw glances each other's way. Glances that seemed to indicate mistrust. The woman seemed to be especially eyeing the cup that the man was drinking out of. Every now and then, when they'd notice each other's looks, they'd put on a fake smile. The girl seemed like she hadn't planned to be here in the first place. Was she dragged into it, just like I was? As I was cleaning my plate of its scraps, something important flashed into my mind. Excuse me, would you mind if I used your phone? The woman tissed. I'm afraid I don't have one. Never cared for those buggers. She looked over to the man. Maybe he can use yours? Of course, I can show you to my house once you're ready to go. I gave off a sigh of relief and thanked the man. He waved his hand in the air. No problem at all. Please excuse me for one moment, though. He shuffled out of the room, presumably towards the bathroom. All right, I'll make some more tea. She scooped up the man's cup and left me alone with the girl. I cleared my throat and nodded in her direction. Thank you again for lending me your phone. I did appreciate that. You're welcome. 
I hope you'll have more luck with the landline. Yeah, I hope so too. And I guess that was the end of the conversation. Perhaps she felt uncomfortable speaking to a weird smelling stranger. I'm going to go wash my dishes. And there she went. The other two were taking quite a while. I used the opportunity to let my eyes wander around the room. The walls were dressed with paintings of all kinds, pictures of nature, as well as more abstract drawings. A fancy looking framed piece of paper on a photograph that was standing on the drawer beneath them caught my eye. The former seemed to be an art degree and the latter a picture of the woman and man when they were younger. They were standing somewhere that could be a university campus. Both had a genuine smile on their face. It seemed like their friendship went back quite a bit. Hey. Whoa! Did you sneak up behind me? I thought I had a clear view of the kitchen entrance. I think I heard some rumbling coming from downstairs. It'd be good if you'd check it out in case she hurt herself. She was likely referring to the woman who had invited me in. Y you did? She's been gone for quite a while now. Maybe something did happen to her. Perhaps I should take a look. I felt her eyes follow me to the basement. I squinted down the stairs. It was almost pitch black. I swallowed back my nerves and carefully crept down the steps. Maybe I should have called out to the woman, but something told me not to. I managed to reach the bottom stair and peeked around the corner. There I saw the woman kneeling by lamplight in front of a large cage. A basket of the strange plant sat behind, beside her. There, there. It's all right. Take a good sniff of the cup. We need to hurry, okay? I know that he's growing one too. Everyone is. Everyone wants to get rid of the competition. We need to hurry. She held the man's cup to the bars. Something in her voice disturbed me. Whatever was going on, I wanted no part of it. I returned to the living room as quietly as I could. There you are, all ready to go? Upon hearing the man's loud voice, I jumped a bit. What had I seen in what I had seen in the basement made me a bit anxious. I took a quick look around and saw the girl was already gone. Sure, I'm ready. Leaving already? I just made some more tea. I turned to see the woman standing in the living room, entrance with a put on smile. Ah, sorry dear, I'm just not young enough to stay out late like we used to. She put on a playful pout. Oh, you do wound me. Come again, you're welcome any time. We bid our farewells and set out to the cold night. I was glad to leave. What I had seen was still nagging on my mind. The man might be in danger. I had to tell him. I, uh, I hesitated. How was I supposed to tell him when I myself wasn't sure what I had seen? But I collected myself and went for it. To my surprise, he wasn't nearly as upset at the woman as I thought he would be. He actually seemed to be more upset at me. I think you should not have snooped around in someone's house who invited you over. I was left perplexed. What just happened? I thought I was warning him, but instead I've been scolded like a child. His face relaxed and he gave me his usual smile, but it seemed slightly pained this time. I suppose there's been no harm done. Perhaps he just didn't believe me. I couldn't blame him. I noticed more and more vacant houses as we crept through the town. Some were boarded up. Doors have been left wide open. Why are there so many empty houses here? These houses have been vacant for a while now. You need not worry. I was sure that I passed by here earlier, but I didn't notice any abandoned buildings back then. They couldn't have left so suddenly in just half a day, could they? An uneasy feeling started to fester inside of me. Here we are. We stopped before a house that looked very much like every other house in the town. He stepped inside. I hesitated at the entrance before trailing behind him. Come on in, no need to be shy. Do you want something to drink? No thanks. The man hesitantly grunted and led me down the hallway. I only wanted to use the phone and get out. All the weirdness of the day had me on edge. But what if I still couldn't reach anyone? Where would I go? I was balancing a fine line between hope and despair and the phone call would probably be what would topple me in either direction. All right, here you are. The phone was on one of those old fashioned ones that had a cord attached to the receiver. At least it had buttons instead of a rotary dial. I picked up the receiver and tried a number. 
Am I doing something wrong? There's no dial tone. Huh? Let me see. He took the receiver from my hand and pressed a few buttons. He let out a disappointed sigh. Not again. Those damn rodents keep getting to my cables. I'll go take a look at it. Feel free to make yourself at home. Ah, in case you get thirsty. I'm not drinking that soda. Once I held a drink in my hand, I did start to get thirsty. Nope, horror movie logic, we learned that lesson. Stay here and wait. I don't think he'd be happy with me poking around considering how he felt after I told him about what I saw in the woman's house. But wanting to test his kindness, I waited. All right, it's all done. I jumped. Sorry, I didn't mean to scare you. No, it's fine. That went faster than I had expected. Good thing I decided against snooping around. The phone should be working now. Feel free to give it a try. I'll give you some space. Call me when you're done. He took the bottle I had drunk from earlier and left through the hallway. No, why, why? Why did he take the bottle? Is this the same thing as her? It's my bottle. It's mine. I didn't even want to drink from it. I had an odd sense of deja vu. I shook it off and started dialing some numbers. They were the same that I'd already tried on the mobile, mobile girl, girl's mobile phone. Once again, they failed to connect. How could that be? I was 100% certain that the numbers were correct. I tried all the numbers of friends, family, even work colleagues I could think of until finally. Yes? Hello? It was a woman's voice that I didn't recognise. I was certain I'd dialed the number of one of my work colleagues. Excuse me, isn't this Tom's telephone number? I don't know who that is. Are you another scam caller? Don't call me again. She hung up. All right, something was definitely wrong here. It might be best to talk to the man and see if he could help me somehow. Maybe he had a clue as to how I could get back home. I crept down the hallway. He went this way, right? I began to hear some murmuring. A steady chill ran down my back. The sound was coming from the basement. The old floorboard squealed between, beneath my toes. I saw flickers of a weak light coming from down the stairs. I took them as gently as I could, as I held a hand out over my mouth to quiet my breath. I reached the bottom and turned a corner. It was just like before. The man knelt before a big cage, a small lamp next to him, and held something up to the bars. He hissed to whatever was inside. Yes, yes, you have the scent now, don't you? We must take care of this one tonight. He's curious, and he will find the secret much faster than the others. No, no, no. We can't have him making something like you too. It's kill or be killed in this town. My stomach dropped out from underneath me as I heard the horrible scraping from inside the cage. I took a step back, bumping into a wall. Before I could react, I had accidentally switched on the main light. The sudden flood of white blinded me for a moment. Once my eyes adjusted, the first thing I saw was it. The man was screaming at me, but I could barely think about him. I couldn't look away from the creature. It was cowering inside a dirty cage that seemed to be too small for it. It had features of a human, but I could also see elements that were distinctly dog-like. Its mouth was way too big, and the inside of it was filled with seemingly random set teeth, or at least something that resembled teeth. Worst of all, though, were the enormous eyes staring back at me. The man fumbled with the lock on the cage. My feet finally began to move. I ran out of the house and into the streets. All the while, the thought was frantically running through my head. I had to get out. I had to get away from the cemented town. With this thought clouding my mind, I hadn't realised that I'd, I'd exited the town already and was now in a big grassy plain. Breathing heavily and fear flooding my mind, I'd almost not noticed how heavy my legs had become. Soon I was struggling to stay on my feet and my vision slowly darkened from exhaustion and panic. I wanted to look back and see how close the monster was, but I was too afraid of seeing it right behind me. I gathered my courage and quickly glanced behind me and to my surprise, the thing wasn't following me. I don't know if it had ever followed me in the first place, but it seems like the man wanted to send it after me to kill me. Realising I was safe for now, I stopped. My legs were numb and almost gave in, but I managed to keep standing. I couldn't believe what I'd just seen. It couldn't be real. 
There was no way to explain what I had seen, and every inch of my body repulsed the idea of such a monster existing. But I had seen it with my own two eyes. I continued on at a slower pace this time, and soon came to a small, but quickly flowing river. It wasn't a good night to get my clothes wet, but it looked small enough for me to jump over with a running start. I wasn't the athletic type, but I managed to leap over the gap. After walking for what felt like hours, I caught a glimpse of a town. It looked quite a bit bigger than the one I'd just left. The concrete buildings looked like needles from the distance. I wasn't fully sure what I felt at that moment. Part of me was relieved about seeing some civilization and being able to look for help. Another part of me was still in shock over what I'd just experienced, but I was too tired to try and make sense of it. So I pushed myself onwards, using the remaining strength I had left. Soon it's going to be over, was what I naively kept mumbling to myself as I dragged myself towards the next nightmare. Hi, Game Director here. Thank you for trying out my Cohesas demo. The game has been in development for way longer than one would think, and I'm happy to be finally able to share it with you. Whether you're a horror manga nerd or have never read one, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you picked up on the dynamic audio implementation as well. As someone who's mainly been a composer and sound designer for visual novels, I made sure to use my expertise in that area to make this game's audio a bit more special. You might even notice the change in title screen theme now that you've finished the first act. Wink wink. So, this has been a very, very interesting story, hasn't it? I tried to, you know, give it the proper gravitas. Um, and I'd like to do more games like this, I think, more, you know, like story based. This has been my Corheza. And I really enjoyed it. I will definitely be playing the second and third doors. Really, really good work. So, I hope you have a very lovely day. Please, if you have any feedback about this style of game, because this kind of story reading game, I would very much like to do more of in future. So yeah, have a very lovely day. And most importantly of all, you do you.